Hey there, everybody. So, something I've been thinking about a lot lately has been point forward postures, specifically with the longsword. So, let's talk a little bit about some point forward postures, their advantages, disadvantages, and where they come from. So, what is a point forward posture? A point forward posture is where I have the point forward. There are many different point forward postures, as you can see, and they all look a little bit different. Now, the main ones that you're going to be familiar with are going to be ox and flug, okay? at least if you do the German positions. So flug, my arms are down here, my arms are down here. My cross guard is turned out at a 45 degree angle, and my point is going out about neck level. Sometimes you'll see the arms move forward, sometimes you'll actually see the arms withdrawn. Either way is fine. I like them to be off of my stomach, kind of in front of my core here. And the cross guard needs to be going at that 45. Don't let it be straight up, straight down. You want it out, so that way it's guarding that opening. Okay? Left fluke is much the same, though naturally left fluke will be a little more extended. We'll talk about left fluke a lot today. But right fluke is going to mostly be your chappy, because what he gives you is the ability to perform strong obsets, in, which is where your body comes across, my hands uncross, and I get a lot of pressure into that middle line. So that's fluke. Ox. Once again, it's the inverse of flu. So cross guard is out of 45, my arms are up and off of my head, and my shilt is in front of my head. Not back here, not here, here. Same thing on the other side. Ox isn't taking a whole lot, which is mostly because of our restrictive gear. However, ox is a really pretty great position. What you can do out of ox is going to be the same sort of offsets that I just talked about. Boom, or alternatively, Boom, you can go from high to low, which is pretty fun. Um, right ox is also very good for defending you because you can very easily drop into, for example, the hanging art, which is the hanging point, which pretty much is ox with the tip drooping down, and launch attacks this way. It's relatively hard to deal with, believe it or not. Most people, when they go into ox, though, are going to be using it as a defensive thing, which is a good idea, right? Someone cuts at you, pop into ox, defend yourself. I can move the tip over to cover my line if need be, or I can move my tip out to defend myself. It's a great guard to withdraw under. So definitely try to get in the habit if you can. So that's Ox and Fluke. What are some others, though? Well, there's variations. Variations that either come from different systems or variations that have come about from modern practice. So let's talk about them. Oh, there's one more, of course, which is uh, Langenor. But we'll come to Langenor in a moment because Langenor is a bit of a weird one. So first off, let's talk about Finestra. Okay, finestra, that doesn't sound German. Finestra is actually an Italian position. It means window. And the idea behind finestra is that I'm going to be chambered backward and I'm looking to do basically an obsetsum. It's also a guard that you can retreat under much like ox. Now, I've seen people compare finestra to ox. I don't think that really does finestra justice because the actions that you do out of it are much more similar to doing schlüssel. Schlüssel sounds German. What's Schlüssel? I'll show you. So, if I'm going to form a good finestra, I like to start with my left foot forward. I'm here in posta longa. We'll go over this again in a moment. And I'm going to fold back. And if I step back correctly, I've also done the volta stable. So I've turned my feet backward and I've chambered my body here. Now, I'm not like this. I'm out here. I'm still in my normal stance. I'm just folded backward. Okay? My arms can be more at the level of my head about here-ish, because I've pulled my body back. And my tip is usually going to be a little bit up. Sometimes you'll see it with the tip the same direction, but sometimes you'll see it up. From here, I would launch a very powerful turn with my body and turn with my sword, boom, into that big extended thrust. Finestra does exist on both sides. Now, just looking at it, you're like, okay, high guard must just be ox, right? It points forward, it's high, it's ox. It's not. Action-wise, while finestra is a position you can recover into, like you do ox, the action that comes out of it and the time I find it more useful is when I use it like schlüssel. So schlüssel comes from Meyer and is here. You may have seen this if you played the game for honor. It's a real guard. However, unlike the warden, you don't cut out of it. What you do with schlüssel, and yes, I know the edge is currently sitting on my arm, this is the way it's formed. So, when you take schlüssel, my arms should be at the level of my own chest. I'm not chambering them too far back. They're just here kind of in front of me. My stance is a bit horse-like, just kind of here-ish. 
And from here, I would launch an extended thrust that once again, it uncurls and gets that obsetsum. The plan with Schlüssel is, there are only a couple, is to launch one big thrust they have to parry and then follow it around with a wrist cut. Feeling-wise and sort of chambering-wise, Finestra feels a lot more like Schlüssel to me. So I kind of loop them in the same family as opposed to calling them like ox. But that's another point forward guard for you. Schlüssel is one of those guards, by the way, don't take it and hold it. If you're going to use Schlüssel, it's come into distance, take Schlüssel, boom, right? Yeah, a little out of distance. Or you're fighting, break apart, Schlüssel, boom. It's like the gazelle punch if you're a boxer, right? It's a big risk versus reward, but it chambers everything in. And if you get it right, they have to react to you, okay? So that's kind of what I see it as. And Finestra, much the same thing, except because of the Volta Stable and the way it works, I can stay in the pocket a little bit more with Finestra. But that's a subject for another time. So those are our high point forward guards, right? Plus the Hanganort. What about low point forward stuff? Well, we also have positions, for example, like, um, you might think that Dente then Chingaro slash Vexel, how, sorry, Vexel, Vexel Hut rather, is going to be point forward. I don't consider it point forward because its point is down. So when I mean point forward, I really do mean the point is forward. But the big one that most people are going to go into is Langenort, which is here, or here, or here, or here, here, here. Have you noticed the theme yet? Langenort just means that the point is long. Langenort is more a, it's going to sound so, but Langenort is more a state of being than it is an official set position. Most times when people take Langenort or they're talking about Langenort, it's going to be this guy. My right foot is forward, my arms are extended. As a right-handed person, this is going to be your chappie and the edge is slightly uh, about a 30 or 45 to the inside. This is also Langenort, but most people won't take it. However, these are all also Langenorts. Even though it looks like ox, this is much further extended than my normal ox is. My normal ox is here. This is Langenort. The idea behind Langenort, which is sometimes referred to as the speaking window, it can get weird, but is that I am creating a long extension of myself to see what you will do with it. You will react upon my blade, you will avoid my blade, you will try to come in, it's an extension and probing type action. Not to mention, all of your cuts, be they Oberhau or Unterhau, they all extend through Langenort, right? All cuts go through three guards. The guard it started in, the guard it meets the target in, and the guard it recovers into. So an Unterhau, for example, goes from Nebenhut, Langenort, Ox. Oberhau goes Vomtag, Langenort, Alber. So that's kind of what Longenort is. And Longenort, you can do a lot of things. You can actually just fence kind of purely out of Longenort. The trick with it is be ready to move in and out of distance. Don't just extend. If you stay in place with your feet, you're just going to get overrun. You've got to be very, very quick in a lot of lateral type movement. It's, it's fighting with an extended guard. So you need to be moving around behind it to keep it extended. So let's talk about some other ones that look like Longenort but aren't Longenort. So, First one, Posta Longa, Italian long and art, as I've heard it said sometimes. Well, it's not. One, you'll notice that my right foot is back. My left foot is forward. My sword is decidedly at a, a 45 degree angle. My elbows are tight in, and I'm not actually extending all that far. I'm just here. Posta Longa is not a position that you stay in. Posta Longa is a position you go into. So it comes down to the two different styles of uh, fighting that are very evident in Lichtenauer versus Fiore. And one is not better than the other. Anyone says different, slap them. Don't slap them. But anyway. Fiore's thing is he likes to reserve his right leg, his power leg, his off-stepping, for when he's executing the hit. Versus Lichtenauer much prefers to employ it as part of his technique so that it should land with the hit. It's just a using one at the one time versus using it the other time. A lot of Messer, actually, especially Le Kuchner, feels a lot more like Fiore, which is intriguing. But the idea here being that if I am, for example, here in uh, uh, Porta di Ferro, right, I'm going to come to the middle and I'm going to meet a bind. Then I'm going to step forward with my thrust, having already won the center line but not committed my leg yet. 
So if we reduce something else, I could follow with other actions. Uh, Porta longa is a really fun one. I like to take it quite a lot because what I'll often do is I'll cut without stepping. People will over parry at my tip, having expected me to step into it, and then I'll just follow through with my thrust, which is quite enjoyable. So that's uh, posta longa. Again, it's not a guard you hold a lot of the time. It's one you come to and then work from. So here's one for us. Let's talk about things like bicorno. What is this, right? So bicorno means two horned guard, right? The idea behind Barcorno is that it's really good for executing thrusts, obviously, I mean, point forward. And it's a very strong position, right? So this is, can be used as an alternative to winding up. So if someone binds with me, rather than pushing up into my wind like I normally would, I instead come up and into it, reversing both of my hands. So I'm not actually changing my hand position. I'm just turning my hands over like I'm cradling something. And that gives me kind of the same idea. It's not as secure, but it's decently secure. I'll sometimes take bicorno and execute just a strong thrust. It's relatively difficult to set aside because of how centralized it is, right? Boom. That's a lot of support going on to it. And if you do manage to set me aside, I'm set up for pretty much any cut I want to do. Um, you can even get into the habit of launching two thrusts where I will set aside, rechamber, and fire again. Sort of this little scorpion tail-like attack, which is quite a lot of fun. Um, again, by corno, not one you stand in. Pop into it, give it a go, come back. Noticing a theme with guards here. So, the last one, uh, the last one I really want to talk about that's canonical is this guy. Well, hey, that just looks like posta longa. It's not. So right now in the school, we're working through Codex Wallerstein. Their positioning, at least from the Nuremberg group, which is the older group, is to come forward and stand in the scales, which means a balanced stance. So I'm currently right foot forward with my body small and my sword extended. This is the sort of position we're talking about. Looks a little sword and bucklery, right? But the idea behind here is that we've got very strong inward guards and we can parry with the point and then follow through with whatever we're going to. Usually it's going to be an unterhau of some kind or we'll even have the action where I step up with my left foot as I wind in because they're so strong in that central line. It's a really, really interesting system that branches out from the idea of fighting right foot forward instead of left foot forward. The entries are still very German, because it is a German source, but it's not leaked an hour. And so it gets really interesting, really nerdy. But this position of making the body small and extending the guard and staying right foot forward in a balanced stance might feel a little sport fencery at first, right? We'll come to that in a second. But Notice that I've got my elbows in, much like when I was holding post longa to make myself super strong. I'm keeping my sword long, and I'm making myself small. If someone attacks at me, I can meet it very easily and follow through with what I want to follow through. However, I am also able to explode into whatever action I want to do because I'm all chambered up here. So, final position I want to talk about in this bit of a rambly video is the Hema sport fencing position. So... I'm not meaning to call anyone out here, and I'm not going to say any names, but, and if you are one of the people that uses this position, you know I love you, I'm just talking about it as a guard. The Hema sport fighting position looks like this. You will be right foot forward, as low as you can physically squat, thumb is on the blade, here. Basically in left flug slash um, long and orc. Now, why does this position exist? A couple reasons. One is because strong openers were not very common in early, I have theories anyway, strong openers were not very common in earlier sport fencing, right? Sport fencing in Hema's regard. And so a lot of people started relying on either thrusting or their follow-up cut. I was one of those people too. But if I'm standing already right for forward, I can launch a big long thrust with either step forward I can also, if someone moves my point, I've got the Zverks set up. And that's all anybody was throwing for a long time was Zverks, right? So here's why I don't really like this position a whole lot. Number one is that your tip is not actually that strong when you stand in this guard. The edge is held sideways, right? Because the thumb's on the blade. 
while I can add pressure to this, it's very easy to get me to overcommit and come in on a different side, and a good shield how will blow right through this. Okay? The other reason I don't particularly like this is a lot of people get their thumbs smashed doing this because it's out here and, and exposed. The reason the thumb grip is okay in things like ox, even though you know, you're not gonna hold it this way, you'd hold it this way, but the reason I can get away with this is because I'm on the attack when I'm doing it or I'm covering myself when I'm withdrawing, in which case the flat of the blade is protecting me. Because my thumb is on top, I'm no longer protected. The other reason I don't like this guard is that the advice we are given from Leeds now is fence not from left if right of hand. If you're standing right foot forward, you are now limited to only being able to launch strong cuts from this side, and most of the cuts that we can do, I can't actually do out of that side. So over, that's gonna take too long. Unter's okay, but most people won't launch Unter House. Zwerkow is really the only one that feels okay, and you can even kind of launch a Zwerk from this side, but it doesn't work very well. Can't do my Krumpf, really. Can't do, can't launch any of my Meisterhau, because I'm not chambered for it. I can sort of launch a Shieldhau, but not really. If I'm back here, even if I'm in Flug, right, I've got that uncrossing, I've got my strength behind it. I have a strong opener. This is reliant kind of on secondary actions and having those Bogan fights. So that's kind of the modern sport fencing position. It's not as common as it used to be, but it doesn't give you a ton of advantages. So I'm not saying don't take it. I'm saying ask yourself why you're taking it and see if maybe one of the other positions might work better for what you're trying to do. Um, biggest thing, however, when it comes to putting a point forward guard is two things. One, make sure it's actually doing something. Don't just stick your point out there and hope that it's working for you. Because all that's giving me is something that I just have to get through to get to you. And if you're not actually doing something with it, I'm not worried about it. Okay? So, for example, if I'm coming forward and you stick this out, for again, I've, I've just taken post along for no reason, I'm set up for something. And you can tell I'm set up for something. Okay? Versus if I just extend my arms out here, I'm not set up for anything. I'm just going point, get away from me. The second thing is never, ever let your point be still if it's extended. If a point is still, a lot of us are going to come in and grab your blade because it's a still point. We don't care, right? So even if you're holding an extended guard, keep it moving just a little bit. Just be ready to move it in and out if someone grabs for it. And if they do grab for it, rip it out of their hand as fast as you can. So those are really my advice for the point forward guards, though I do have way more on it, of course. But this is a general overview of some of them. Um, I'd love to go into more detail about them. I just kind of wanted to do this because I was thinking about point forward guards and talking about some of the different ones I've seen from both the German system, the Italian system, and the common fencer tradition. And common fencer including our, our modern HEMA practice because that's what we are. Either way though, hopefully that was interesting. Apologies if I butchered any Italian terms. I'm still kind of newish to the, um, the Fiore tradition. But hopefully that was interesting. Everyone be sure to stay he healthy out there. We'll go over some other guards and techniques another time.